market, good good ones that we're, we're going through? Pop open the champagne. I mean, we <laughs> haven't seen this type of close in five years, and it's been a pretty long journey for the Australian share market. If we just have a look at the last 10 years of the ASX 200 index, this is what it looks like. This is what it looks like. Um, you can see that we've been through quite a roller coaster ride, the global financial crisis, and then the market looked like it was on a recovery path, but actually we went sideways before going back down. And now it looks like we are breaking new ground, the ground that we haven't seen over the last few years. The next test for the market is the market's high for, two th uh, for the last five years, which is at 5,249 points. So we'll be watching that for the rest of the week. The market today, though, if we have a look, um, we saw a rise of 0. 6%, the fourth consecutive days of gains, and many companies also reaching 52 week highs. We saw stocks like Challenger Financial Group, G8 Education, REM, as well as Macquarie Group and Harvey Norman all hitting 52 week highs. And for G8 Education, it was an all time record high. And you'll notice that these group of shares, they don't belong to just one sector, they are broad based uh, across different sectors of the market. So, re really, that does bode well for the Aussie market. Today, it was the materials that just outperformed. Fortescue was up by 6.4%. Atlas was up by 3.5%. We saw BCI and up by 3.4%. Iron ore, once again, defying any bearish views out there um, at 135 US a tonne. And on the flip side, because we are seeing the market with all this positive momentum, one area that lo is losing out is defensives. We saw Telstra, uh, the telecom, as well as the utility space, the only uh, sectors uh, besides the energy space to finish in the red today. So all up, a great day for the Aussie share market. Let's try and break new ground for 2013. Macro issues that you're going to be watching for that are going to have a, a, a great bearing on our market. John obviously mentioned tapering. That shapes, I assume, as, as pretty much the key one. I think the US and tapering is the big thing on investors' radars at the moment. But the thing is, in terms of the macro backdrop, it's the best that we've seen in a number of years. So the macro yeah. environment is actually looking pretty good. We've seen some good numbers coming out of China, supporting uh, better than expected uh, growth. U.S. tapering talk is because the U.S. economy is improving. And we've also seen some better manufacturing and services numbers coming out of the U.K. and the European region as well. So for investors, I think the macro concerns are slowly starting to fade away. In terms of the currency moves and, um, I guess, asset markets, because what we are watching is the tapering in the US. So next week's FOMC meeting is going to be a big one. There is an expectation that we will see tapering, but it'll be in very small amounts. So that's one of the things to watch out for in terms of the market. But I think domestically, we are seeing the cycle starting to turn now. And that's a huge positive for things like earnings, which have been flat or negative over the last three years. And usually when we see e earnings growth, it's not a one-year trend, but it's a multi-year trend. So even if the market is getting ahead of earnings growth are uh, usually because we see earnings growth over a number of years we do play a bit of catch up so it is sort of normal to see small uh, pullbacks but overall I think the cycle is turning in investors favors favors and we uh, we saw consumer confidence numbers today up by 4.7 percent to a read of 110.6 the highest read that we've seen in almost three years so mm. hopefully we're seeing the start of a trend there and remember the consumer discretionary sector it's been a standout o over the last 52 weeks the market getting ahead of earnings but the expectation that this cycle is turning that we are seeing more home sales sales and some of the white good uh, product sellers are going to do quite well is helping stocks like Harvey Norman which was up by 2.3 uh, percent today this is a stock that's up 61 percent over the last 12 months JB Hi is up 130 percent revel groups up 65 percent premier investments up by 60 percent so i think the cycle here in australia is turning and that does bode well for the cyclical but julia we're just looking at some of the charts of the stocks you made mention there with quite incredible gains in a relatively short period of time is that what sometimes causes a little bit of concern in the market about toppy parts of this market Absolutely, and in terms of uh, valuations, I guess valuations are starting to look a tad on the expensive side. But if we look at PE ratios on the Australian share market, well, they do tend to jump around. They don't always stay at the average of 16, and sometimes we're under that mark, and sometimes we're over that mark, depending on how optimistic or how pessimistic uh, investors are feeling. So while we can say that the market is looking a tiny bit overvalued, that doesn't always pull back to a, pu a pullback on the Australian mm. share market, and may just indicate that investors are looking for 
forward and pricing in an uptick during the cycle. We have a look at the PE ratio of the Australian share market and this is just uh, the all ordinaries graph and we're just having a look at it over the last uh, 20 years. This is what it looks like. So you can see that we are near the peak that we've seen in the last five years and I guess that's a little bit of a concern as well but the share market in terms of earnings, we're looking the best that we've seen in around about five years as well. So I guess it needs to be uh, kept in context of where we are in terms of the earnings cycle and the interest rate cycle. And it does look like cyclical conditions are improving, something that we haven't seen for a number of years.